Hi, my name is Brenton Harrison with Henderson Financial Group, and we're here to talk about how income taxes are calculated. The first part of calculating your federal income taxes is finding your gross income. And those are all the sources of revenue that you've had over the past year. It may not just be your salary, it could also be things like investment income or real estate income. And when you total all those up, that's your gross income. After you found your gross income, the next step is to subtract any above the line tax deductions. So we first have to explain what a tax deduction is. Tax deductions are things you did over the previous year that help reduce the amount of your income that's subject to federal income taxes. And an above the line tax deduction is a tax deduction that any taxpayer can use regardless of how they file their income taxes, which we'll cover in a bit. An example of an above the line tax deduction is the money that you contribute to an eligible pre-tax retirement account. As an example, if you have $100,000 gross income and you contribute $5,000 to a pre-tax retirement account, that brings down uh, as a tax deduction your taxable income to $95,000. When you do that calculation, what you've done is you found your adjusted gross income, which is your gross income minus some adjustments. After you found your adjusted gross income, the next step is to choose between taking the standard deduction on your tax return or itemizing your taxes. The standard deduction is a tax deduction you can use to reduce your taxable income even further. And there's a set amount each year that the IRS offers as a standard deduction based on how you choose to file your taxes, whether it's single, married filing separately, married filing jointly, and so on and so forth. But you might find that there are certain below the line tax deductions, such as the amount of money that you contribute to a charitable organization that exceed the amount of deductions you get with the standard deduction. And if that's the case, you might choose instead of taking the standard deduction to itemize all of those below the line tax deductions to take your taxable income down as far as you possibly can. Once you have done that, either taking the standard deduction or the itemized deductions, you now have found your taxable income. And this is the amount of income that you will actually have to pay taxes on when we look at the federal tax brackets. So let's say that our person who had $100,000 gross income had $5,000 of above the line tax deductions, which made their adjusted gross income $95,000. Then maybe they find that they had $20,000 of itemized tax deductions, so they itemized bringing their taxable income down to $75,000. This is the amount of money they'll pay taxes on, and as we look at the tax brackets, we can get an estimate for the tax bracket that they fall in. Let's look at the federal tax brackets for 2019 and assume that the person we are looking at in our example is a single person with a taxable income of $75,000. You can actually see that the different portions of their income are taxed at different levels. For example, every dollar they make from zero to 9,700 is taxed at 10%, while every dollar from 9,701 to $39,475 is taxed at 12%. And every dollar from $39,476 to their $75,000 taxable income is taxed at 22%. This means that 22% is their marginal tax bracket. It's the amount or the bracket that the highest portion of their income falls in. But however, when they total up those smaller amounts, they might find that they actually paid a lower rate than their 22%. And the rate that they actually paid is called their effective tax rate, the rate they actually paid on their taxable income. When you've done the calculations using the federal tax bracket, you'll come to a certain amount that's a tentative number you owe on your taxes. In our example, let's say that that's $10,000. But that's not where you stop when you calculate your federal income taxes, because there are things called tax credits which could reduce the amount of money you owe in taxes. As we covered, a tax deduction is something that's used to reduce the amount of your income that's subject to taxes. But a tax credit is something that after calculating your taxes actually reduces the total number that you owe. An example of a tax credit would be certain credits that are available for having minor children in your home. So in our example, if we have $10,000 of taxes that we calculated are owed, a $1,000 tax credit would actually reduce the amount of taxes we pay to $9,000. This is the amount we pay in federal income taxes, and if you're an employee, you might have an estimated amount that your employer has worked with you to take out of your paycheck each pay period to send to the IRS, and their hope is that they get as close to that number that you end up owing as possible. 
But in many cases, you'll find that they've sent more than you actually owed on your taxes. And when you calculate them at the end of the year and you've overpaid, that's when you get a tax refund and get a reimbursement of the extra amount you paid throughout the year to the IRS. I hope this was useful and gave you some information that you can take into the future and be more knowledgeable about tax planning. And if you have any questions, please feel free to subscribe, check out our future videos, and we'll keep bringing you more information that we hope adds to your financial picture. I'll see you soon.